in this video, we're going to put together all of the transformations we've done. So reflections, stretches, compressions, vertical and horizontal translations. We're going to do that by looking at two graphs and then coming up with what the transformation must have been. When you find each one, we're going to check the answers with Desmos. So let's go ahead and start with this first column. We have f of x equals the square root of under the radical 9 minus x squared. This gives us the graph of a half circle. It's the graph of f of x is dashed on the handout. The half circle has points at negative 3, 0, positive 3, 0, and 0, comma 3. So that kind of sketches out the half circle curve for you. The graph of g has endpoints at negative 1, 1, 5, 1, and kind of the upper value here, the maximum value is at 2, comma 4. How has f been transformed to get g? Well, the first thing you ought to look for is whether the graph has undergone any kind of reflection or compression or stretch, either horizontally or vertically. In this case, it looks like it has the exact same shape, same width, same height. It's just been moved up, down, left, right. So in this case, it's gone right and it's gone up. It's If we just look at one point, so the first point on F, which was negative 3 comma 0, that's moved to negative 1 comma 1 on the G graph. So that's over to the right two units and up one unit. So we could say that G of X is the graph of F of, instead of X, we'll say X minus 2. That gives us the movement of 2 right and then right parentheses, and then plus one on the outside of those parentheses. Let's double check, make sure we've got that right. I've got f of x graphed, so now let's graph g of x. That's going to be f of left parentheses, x minus two, right parentheses, plus one. And that looks good, it's exactly the way we have it on the notes. Okay, the second one in that column, we have the same graph of F, that half circle, and now the graph of G is a half circle under the x-axis, so its first point is negative 1 comma 0, it goes down to a minimum of 2 comma negative 3, and its far right point is 5 comma 0. So if we ask ourselves that question, have there been any reflections, stretches, or compressions, the answer is yes, we do have a reflection. In terms of width and height of the graph, it looks the same, so only a reflection. So let's write that down first, a vertical reflection. We should take that into account first, right? So if we imagine drawing that vertical reflection from the original function, we would still have the point at negative 3 comma 0, then we would have a point at 0 comma negative 3 and a point at 3 comma 0. So that vertical reflection would give us a half circle underneath the x-axis. From that half circle, from that vertical reflection, we simply need to move the graph to the right two units. So that's a replacement. We replace x with x minus 2. So the first thing that happens is the vertical reflection, and that gives us negative f of x. And then the second thing that happens is we replace x with x minus 2. So that's going to be negative f of left parentheses, x minus 2, right parentheses. Notice I didn't put an equal sign between those. I made an arrow to show that they're not equal. I'm just progressing from one step to another. So in this case, g of x, g left parentheses, x right parentheses, is negative f left parentheses, x minus 2, right parentheses. And again, we can go check that just to make sure. And there we go. In Desmos, we can see f of x and g of x, and it looks exactly like it is in our notes. Now I'd like to have you all try the last graph in the first column. So take that same graph of f of x and see what you need to do to get g of x. In this case, g of x is the bottom half of the circle. Its leftmost point is negative 3, negative 1. Its minimum value is 0, negative 4, and its rightmost point is 3, comma, negative 1. Pause the video and give that a try. Okay, we're back. 
So first question, are there any reflections, stretches, or compressions? And in this case, we can definitely see a vertical reflection. The graph is bottom half of the circle instead of the top half of the circle. So that's going to be doing some kind of negative f of x. And then we don't see any change to the height or width of the actual graph. And so the next thing that happens is we just need to move that graph down a unit. So if we were to draw that vertical reflection, I'm going to draw it in red over here, you can see that what I need to do next is move the graph down one unit to get to where G is. So then I need to go down one, and so that's going to be subtracting on the outside, so it's going to be negative F of X, and then minus one. So g of x is negative f of x, and then outside of the f of x, minus 1. Let's double check it, and it looks like, and here we have the graph of f of x and our new graph of g of x, and everything looks great. Moving to the second column. In this column, we have f of x equals just the square root of x. So that's a nice square root graph with an end point at 0, 0, going through the point 1, 1, and 4, 2. We have a g of x graph that has an end point at negative 2, 0, and it's actually decreasing into that end point. So the next point over to the left is negative 3, 1, and then negative 6, 2 would be another point on the graph. So what's happened to go from F to G? First we look for reflections, stretches, and compressions. So we definitely have a reflection because F is an increasing square root graph and G is a decreasing square root graph. So we have some kind of horizontal reflection, which we know means we've got to do something like F of negative X. Now if I draw F of negative X, I would put a point at 0, 0, negative 1, 1, and negative 4, 2. And from there, to get to the G function, I have I need to still ask myself, is there some kind of stretch or compression here? And because I have points on both graphs that are equidistant apart, for example, 0, 0 and negative 2, 0 are exactly two units apart, and negative 1, 1 and negative 3, 1 are exactly two units apart. Because of that, I know that I don't have a stretch or compression, and so I just want to move the graph two units left. This is going to be a replacement of x with x plus 2. And so in this case, we'll have f of negative parentheses x plus 2, and then two closing parentheses. Let's double check that one just to make sure. Here we have the graph of f of x equals the square root of x. And now I'm going to also show the graph of g of x equals f left parentheses negative left parentheses x plus 2 right paren right paren and it does match exactly what we have on our notes. The second graph in the second column is still f of x equals the square root of x. In this case, g has an end point of 0, negative 1, and it's a decreasing graph, so it has a point at 1, negative 2, and a point at 4, negative 3. There's definitely a vertical reflection here. So let's start by writing out vertical reflection, which would be something like negative f of x. If I was to draw that vertical reflection, I would have points at 0, 0, 1, negative 1, and 4, negative 2. That's the perfect vertical reflection. And if I look at the graph of g, I, I can see that I've just moved the graph of g down one unit from each of those points. So the next thing that happens is this goes down one. That's going to be negative f of x, and then minus 1 on the outside of that. So g of x equals negative f of x, and then minus 1 off to the right of that. Let's have you folks try this last one. We have the same f of x equals the square root of x, and now g of x is a curve with an endpoint at 0, 3, and points at negative 1, 2, and negative 4, 1. So it's actually the graph is actually increasing into that end point. So are there any stretches or compressions? Well, the points are all still about the same distance apart. Let's start by just doing a horizontal reflection to get it onto the left side of the y-axis, which would be f of negative x. That would give us the graph 
with 0, 0, negative 1, 1, and negative 4, 2. So that gets us moving in the right direction, so to speak. But the problem is that the graph we now have is a decreasing graph, and the graph we want is an increasing graph. So the next thing I'm actually going to do is a vertical reflection, because remember, we don't want to move things up and down until we've got all the reflections in place. So next I'm going to do a vertical reflection, and so that's going to put a negative on the outside of the function, so negative f of negative x. So I'm going to take these points, 0, 0 is still there, negative 1, 1 becomes negative 1, negative 1, and negative 4, 2 becomes negative 4, negative 2. Okay, now we can see that the only thing that we're missing is a vertical shift of that graph up 3 units. So finally we'll go up three units, and that will give us negative f, parentheses, negative x, close the parentheses, and then on the outside, plus three. Again, we can walk through this in Desmos. We can walk through all of these steps to make sure that we know what we're doing. So if we start with g of x equals f of x, the first thing we did was a horizontal reflection. That's f of negative x. Looks good. Then we did a vertical reflection, which is negative f of negative x. Looks good. And then we added a plus 3 to that, and that matches what we saw in our notes.